Since I started this channel, I've been doing a lot of tutoring for newer players, both in my videos and privately with people who have contacted me. And given some of the recurring topics in these discussions, I've come up with these five pieces of advice that I feel comfortable giving to any new player. Number five, Level Mash. I've mentioned her in nearly every video I've made thus far, and will most likely continue to do so. This game hands you one of the strongest units around, and then the majority of new players ignore her. I know she seems underwhelming at the beginning of the game, but trust me on this, stick with her. Level her and upgrade her skills whenever you're able. Her level cap, skills, and noble phantasm will all get improved as you complete story chapters. Her team-wide defensive utility is basically unmatched, and she can make your entire team extremely difficult to kill. So don't ignore her and leave her level 1, invest in her starting right away. Number 4. Start with your low rarity units. I understand the temptation here, I really do. This unit has 4 or 5 stars, so they must be better than the ones with 2 or 3, right? Well, in many situations, no. Especially so in the early game. The team cost mechanic means you can hardly even bring gold servants until you level up a fair bit. This isn't the game trying to annoy you, this is the game trying to make you value your low rarity units. Caesar is better than many 4 star sabers in many situations. Ku is one of the very best lancers in the game regardless of rarity. Lu Bu has some of the highest noble phantasm damage of any servant. The game gives you all of these and more for free, so use them! Their material cost to ascend and skill up is lower and therefore easier to achieve. They need far fewer embers because of their lower level cap. Their damage will often be higher on average because many have upgraded noble phantasms and the ease of getting them to NP5. Gold units are great, and you'll definitely want to build them up one day, but in the early game, the return on investment is dramatically higher for low rarity units. Number 3. Use class advantage and build a well-rounded roster. I often see new players saying something to the effect of, I want to build my team around, or my team is composed of these couple servants, is that any good? That this game gives you 10 team slots right away with no unlocking required is not just a funny coincidence. The class advantage system is extremely important in this game. A servant on the right side of the class advantage equation will not only deal more damage, but will receive less damage as well. This means that a servant with class advantage is getting both a defensive and offensive buff at all times during a battle. When enemies look like this, this isn't a huge deal, but eventually you'll be fighting regular mobs with 5 or 6 digits of HP, and in those situations you'll want to be hitting as hard and taking as little damage as possible. So throwing all your embers at one saber means you'll have no trouble with lancers, but means you're far from optimal most of the rest of the time, and especially not against archers. So spread your resources out and make sure you've got at least one viable option regardless of the kind of enemy you're fighting. Side note, one really strong berserker is not necessarily the best answer to this conundrum, but we'll talk about them in the next video. Number 2, take advantage of the community. The FGO community is one of the best parts of this game, and it is here to help you with whatever you need. Anything from asking questions, to getting extensive guides to some of the harder fights in the game, hooking yourself up with a friends list full of whales, or maybe just having a chat about the game, or looking at some art. Join the FGO subreddit, use the GamePress wiki, or any other wiki, watch other FGO content creators. Do it however you want, but getting involved with the community somehow is probably going to increase your enjoyment in a wide variety of ways. Number 1. Don't play the game in a way that makes you hate it. There's a common meme as it surrounds this game, you may have seen it once or twice. But FGO doesn't have to be that way unless you make it so for yourself. This is my most complicated piece of advice because it's going to vary from person to person. The parts of this game that you hate won't be the same things that others hate, but figure out what those things are and do your best to avoid them. Phrased differently, figure out your priorities and what you're willing and not willing to do in order to accomplish them. If you find that you hate farming free quests for material drops, don't do it. Just understand that it means leveling skills and performing ascensions will be a much slower process for you. If you want to 10-10-10 a bunch of servants right after getting them, more power to you. Just understand that the amount of repetitive grinding you'll have to do to accomplish that will be extreme. Building a slew of off-meta units whom you like may mean you struggle through some of the harder parts of the game. Building every team with a strict adherence to the meta may mean you have to avoid using units you enjoy more. 
What I'm saying is that everything in this game has a trade-off, and I see people driving themselves crazy trying to get the best of both worlds and finding out that doing so is impossible. So understand your priorities and what you'll need to trade off in order to accomplish them. Thank you for watching. If you need help with the game, feel free to get in touch by any of the methods shown on screen now.